the pleasure of introducing our next keynote, who again, doesn't need much introduction. All he did in his past was to pioneer a cable TV operation, start one of India's largest toothbrush companies, as well as uh, be known as one of the 75 most influential people in the 21st century. This is what he did in the first innings. In the second innings, he uh, co-founded a global ed tech leader, Upgrad, which has impacted over 1 million learners across the world. And now, along with his wife, they're co-founders for the nonprofit Swadesh Foundation, which is committed to empowering 1 million lives in rural India. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Ronnie Screwwala. Ronnie, the floor is yours. If you can unmute yourself and turn your video on, we'll be ready to go. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having me here. Um, I like panel discussions because there are always a lot more uh, diverse uh, views. And I think uh, given the onerous task of talking to all of you who pretty much been there and done that for 10 minutes. So I just had a few sort of headline thoughts. Um, firstly, you know, thank you for conferring us with an honor um, at this uh, award ceremony too. But that just brought me to my first thought. When I first sort of got the mail, I just thought when you're giving back, which in itself is such a personal thing, <clears throat> And, and is it something that really needs that kind of an award? Is, the, is, is awards even a relevant area when you're giving back and when it's something that's so personal? Um, and you know, I think that's just food for thought. I did kind of reconcile to the fact that I think more and more forums like this and maybe awards like this and recognition like this encourage different people at different levels. Um, but it also evangelizes what we all really want to do so that more and more people feel the need <clears throat> to do that. So I just think it's a question of when, you, when you're looking to award in an area which is so personal, um, is that something that needs to be positioned in really the right manner? And I think we have, but I just want to leave that thought with everyone here. The second really is, and I heard the previous panel too, I mean, philanthropy right now for me personally, it's a large word. And the reason I say it's a large word is because it just, it just reeks of you need to be evolved. You need to be at a certain age. You need to have a certain bank balance. And that kind of eliminates a lot of people thinking, aha, okay, I should put this down of when I'm at this age and I'm at this stage. But I think what we want to do at this forum and other forums is really need to see how inclusive everyone is to that. So somewhere down the line, even without recoining the phrase philanthropy, is it everyone's onus here to actually position this as a much more all generations part of it and not something that you need to cut big checks on or need to have the resources for? And I think some of the panelists previously also mentioned that. My daughter started her own NGO. She, she, uh, and right now it's a mentoring and mentee program. There isn't much of a cost. There isn't much of an investment. It's everyone's time. Nobody's donating, her corpus fund is minimum, but the impact that it's having, because there are 700 mentors and 700 mentees is absolutely incredible. So I think just a sort of a review on how do we make the word philanthropy a lot more accessible and a lot more, what does it mean for me? And I can also do that versus a pedestal approach to how we treat philanthropy, something that I think we all need to kind of think about. Third, I have to say that I'm not a very good fan of um, pledging uh, and this public announcement that everyone makes on pledging and controversial as that may sound. That's just something, again, I want to put forward. I know it kind of is a prompt for other people to do that, but I think it also sometimes acts in the, in the reverse way. And a little bit of what I mentioned on the big word of philanthropy, that if you suddenly have people who are saying I'm pledging and then the amount, it kind of alienates 99 out of 100 people who feel, aha, this is not necessarily for me. So I think, again, for a forum like this, where all of us are people who participate in advocacy, participate in actually evangelizing this, is this something when we're looking at the element of pledging, do we really, what do we want to communicate? So I think these are the three sort of broad points I wanted to start up with. Just awards is very, very important, but how do we position that, especially in a very personalized thing like giving in 
What do we need to do to make the word philanthropy actually very accessible and identifiable, not to age groups, but to anyone of any social economic status? And I think the third one is just the element of pledging and how positive is that versus what does it make it sound an extremely alienating uh, for a lot of people. Moving on to our personal experience that my wife uh, Zarina and I uh, looked at, I can only say firsthand, we started our NGO at that time, which was called SHARE, when we were both in our 20s, late 20s, okay? And it was like, um, we had a 10,000 square foot rented office, but we felt a thousand square foot of that we could give to a, to a mobile crash, a little bit of an orphanage and a little bit of an old age home. And that became the culture of the company because that was the office. Almost the 30 people that grew to 300 people then started identifying with that. And that's why I feel so strongly that today we need to make this a lot more accessible. The way I see giving back, I think of it as two ways. And this is something that I've learned for the last five to six years. Either you're a catalyst or it's something that's very personal. And let me explain both. Um, when I'm a catalyst, it means that it is something that I want to do, but half of what I'm doing, and I think to a certain extent we define, uh, Zarina and I define how we look at Swadesh as being personal and being a catalyst. And I think that's just my entrepreneurial days that have taught you that because you look at that, but after a certain stage, even as an entrepreneur or as a leader, you are then being a catalyst for multiple other people. And how do you bring that into the NGO space, the philanthropy space, the foundation space? And what do I mean by that? There's a lot of the vision that we state out personally, but by also playing the catalyst role, we then involve multiple other foundations, a lot of people from CSR donations, and suddenly you can look at scale because I think we all understand one thing in India, when you need to solve any problem, at any level, the first word that comes to our mind is solving it at scale. That doesn't mean that you need to be intimidated and that doesn't mean for many people that says, no, but I'm just doing it in one school or one village or 10 kids, of course it is. But for all of us, I think it's very, very important that when we are here as leaders, that we look at solving problems at scale. And so I just wanna leave that thought with you that how do we in everything that we do in our NGO foundation personal, play a dual role of it being personal, your vision, your push, your identification, but also being a catalyst. So lastly, I'd just like to describe in a very brief element, uh, the Swades Foundation model. Um, you know, around 2013, 2014, when both Zari and I were uh, discussing how we can evolve this model to a much more scalable model. We met with tons and tons of uh, NGOs, individuals, et cetera. And finally, we settled on a model which, where we felt is something we wanted to do, but we can also evangelize and catalyze that. And I think the summary of that one was number one, that we wanted a concentric geography where it was all interconnected. So we took five, six, and now seven blocks in a particular state and the entire geography of 2,200 villages were covered. Second, with a lot of naysayers, we also approached it with the fact that we wanted to impact the entire village in all aspects, from water and sanitation and education and health to livelihood. And we had a lot of naysayers, but I think in the long run, it's paid out, albeit with a lot of learning as we go forward. And the last thing I would like to say here today for all of us, outside of the world of philanthropy, what we want to do with pledging, why is catalyst as important as personal is, is Finally, as leaders, philanthropy is about outcomes and about impact. And I think if we spend as much time as we do about the giving in measuring the outcome and the impact, because one of the things we learned while we were doing all our research was incredible amount of good work, but we don't review it. And when you don't review it, then you feel, oh, I've been, I've been with this school for 20 years. And we're thinking, okay, but after five years and what has been the improvement? By six years, maybe you should have exited that school and looked at another school because you've created that impact. So I think very synergistic with the words of philanthropy comes two words, which is impact and outcomes and constant measuring of them. Thanks very much. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I look forward to participating for the rest of the sessions.